Minecraft is famous for letting its players have an infinite amount of possibilities for things to build. This is one of the main appeals for the game because you can make so many different things like houses, farms, and so on. But what if you get too lazy? Well, luckily Minecraft's got you covered with its several different structures. These are usually buildings that naturally generate in a world and are used to give the player certain items and generally just breathe more life into each seed. There are actually quite a few structures and most of them are extremely exciting to come across. However, some are definitely better than others. So today, I thought it'd be fun to rank all of Minecraft structures from the worst to the best. Now, how exactly am I going to be ranking these? Because there are quite a few ways you could. Well, this was actually pretty difficult for me to decide, but in the end, I decided to go with a combination of usefulness and how it looks. So optimally, the best structures will be both useful and just cool to look at. Now, I also have to consider what I'm counting as a structure for this video, which was luckily not too hard since the Minecraft wiki gives a pretty solid list of them. I also decided to throw on the dungeon, desert well, geode, and fossil from the structure like section, since I feel like they belong based on what was in the main list. I also want to mention that I won't be ranking each type of structure separately. For example, the village variants will all be on one spot, but I will give a mini village ranking when I get to it. Finally, this is coming from a Java survival perspective, so just keep that in mind. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. At 200k, I'm going to be ranking every 2D Mario level, and let's jump right into the worst structure. Of all my Minecraft rankings, I think this one might just be the most difficult one I have ever had to put together. A lot of the structures are incredibly helpful, so the rankings got pretty dang close. The last place was easy, 25 the nether fossil. This is quite literally just bone blocks. Now yeah, it is a kind of nice source of bone meal, but it's quite clearly the worst structure in the game. Apparently, you can use them to find strongholds somehow, but I don't know, to me they're just bones. I'm honestly surprised the wiki had this listed as a full structure, but the normal fossils were only listed as structure-like. Oh hey, speaking of which, 24 the fossil. Yeah, this is basically the same thing, but they generate in the overworld instead of the nether. You'll find them underground in deserts and swamps, but they are extremely rare. In fact, this is the only structure I have never found naturally in a world. Now you could duck points for rarity since the nether fossil is pretty common, but I think what puts the normal fossil on top is the fact that it can rarely generate with coal and diamond ore instead of a bone block. Those are some pretty nice resources, so I think the normal fossil deserves to be on top. Oh, also one of the normal fossils can look like this. 23, the Desert Well. This is the one I'm sure many people were expecting to be in last place. These would spawn in desert biomes, if you couldn't tell by the name, and basically did nothing. They added a bit of life to the world, which is nice, but outside of that, they were pretty pointless. However, you may notice that I've been using the past tense here, because this, and many other structures, got some pretty significant changes in 1.20. In the case of the Desert Well, the sand blocks on the inside now have a chance of spawning in a suspicious sand. By using the brush, you can get a decent selection of items from them. Yeah, sometimes it'll be something lame like a brick. But you can also sometimes get stuff like emeralds. The most notable items, though, are the two exclusive pottery sherds, the arms up sherd and the brewer sherd. Now, yes, the sherds are just aesthetic things you can add to pots, but I honestly really like that feature, and I think it fits the structure well. I also think the two sherds it got are pretty good. I mean, look how happy this one is. Yippee! I could see an argument that the fossils deserve to be higher due to a large amount of bone meal, but I think the exclusivity of the shards here really helps out the desert well. 22, the geode. All right, here's where things start to get both good and extremely difficult to rank. The geodes will spawn underground and are the main source of amethyst. Not only do they have a ton of amethyst blocks right out of the gate, but the budding amethyst will also spawn more amethyst shards on top of them that can be used to make certain items. The interesting thing about budding amethyst though is that it can't be picked up or moved, meaning if you want more amethyst at any point, you'll need to return to the geode. However, that's where the main problem comes in. Amethyst Amethyst shards themselves are really just not that useful right now. They essentially have five different uses. First is for armor trims, but realistically, you'd only ever need to use four amethyst shards max for that. The other four uses are all crafting recipes. The spyglass is pretty cool, but there's no reason to ever craft it more than once. As for the others, the block of amethyst just doesn't look that great in my opinion, and the calibrated skulk sensor is a super niche redstone component. That pretty much just leaves tinted glass, which to be fair, is a pretty good block. It has the unique property of letting players see through it, but not letting light pass through it. I use them all the time for mob farms so that we can see into the spawner room, so this is definitely a good block. Sadly though, I don't think it's enough for me to push the geode much higher, but if amethyst gets more uses in the future, similar to copper in 1.20.1, then this could go up on the list. Oh, and also geodes are the only place to get calcite, which is a nice looking block, but not much else. 21, Buried Treasure. This was one of the most difficult ones for me to place on the entire list. On one hand, it's got some pretty useful loot inside of it, but on the other hand, it's literally just one block. So I think its placement will heavily sway based on if you prefer usefulness or cool coolness, but for me, I think I'm gonna place it here. I do quite like the mechanic of finding a buried treasure map and digging it up, though sometimes different maps can lead to the same chest, which is mildly annoying. Inside the chest itself, you can find 12 different items. Iron ingots, gold ingots, cooked cod, cooked salmon, water breathing potions, TNT, emeralds, 
prismarine crystals, diamonds, leather tunics, iron swords, and hearts of the sea. This is also the only place where you can get hearts of the sea, which is the main ingredient in the conduit. These are basically underwater beacons and can be pretty useful, so safe to say the loot here is definitely worth collecting. Also funnily enough, the Bedrock Edition actually has a few more items thrown into its chest, which include chainmail armor, cake, mellow high, and weight. I honestly kind of like the disc being here. It's cool that they're different from Cat and 13, which are found everywhere. So yeah, the buried treasure chest is definitely useful, but it feels kind of unfair to place it high up in a structure ranking when it's literally just a single block. 20. The Witch Hut For a majority of Minecraft players, this one is honestly kind of lame. I mean, it's a neat little building to spruce up the swamp biome, don't get me wrong, but there's really nothing inside here that's all that useful. There's no chest here, so the best thing you can find in this structure is a cauldron. Yeah, not even a brewing stand because this doesn't have one for some reason. Honestly, most of the time I see these things, I don't even bother going inside. The most interesting part about a witch hut are the two mobs that can spawn. This is the main place where you can get a black cat, since they can only spawn in villages during a full moon. Witches can also spawn here, and they do drop some pretty decent loot. Now, originally, I was going to place the witch hut much higher because of their unique property of spawning witches. That made it possible to create witch farms, though it required a lot of effort, so it was really only good for the very top level of Minecraft. But then I remembered witches can spawn in raids, and you can make raid farms, so... I'm sure some people may still find a use for making specifically a witch farm, but I personally think a raid farm is not only way better, but way easier. So that just leaves a, well, cute, pretty useless structure. 19. The Trail Ruins As of the time of making this, these are the most recent structures added to the game. I probably should have said this video was made during 1.20. Great, now I'm gonna get a billion comments asking where the trial chambers are next update. Anyway, these are meant to show off the archaeology mechanic as these structures are filled with suspicious gravel. The Trail Ruins also have by far the most exclusive items out of any structure in this video, with a grand total of 12. Those are 7 pottery sherds, 4 armor trims, and the relic music disc. Now that stuff can be pretty cool, but technically all of them are just aesthetic things. Now, I don't really think that's a problem per se, but the other structures usually have things that can help you significantly progress in the game. The big problem I have with Trail Ruins, though, is just how annoying they can be. Those 12 items are far from the only things you can find in Suspicious Gravel, as you can also get such exciting items like Light Blue Dye and magenta stained glass pane. The majority of items you get will be something lame like that, which makes inventory management here a nightmare. Still, if you got nothing better to do than spending an afternoon going through one of these, it isn't the worst thing in the world, but the structures above this are definitely a bit more exciting. 18. The Jungle Temple Honestly, this is one of the most nostalgic structures for me. I used to play in a seed that had the world spawn right next to one all the time. You can even see it in some of my very, very old videos. What was I playing in like 3 frames per second? But pushing my nostalgia aside, the loot here isn't the greatest, especially considering how rare it is. It's certainly not bad, but it could be better. There are currently 13 different items you can get, the most notable of which are diamonds, enchanted books, and the exclusive wild armor trim. Now most of the time, you'll just be getting stuff like rotten flesh and bamboo, but the possibility of good loot still makes these worth exploring. I also do quite like how these things are set up, as they involve a lot of redstone. There are some very dangerous tripwire traps and a lever combination puzzle for one of the chests that I can never remember how to solve. The added redstone does make the jungle temple a more fun structure though, and since the aesthetic is also an important part of this ranking, I think it belongs here on the list. 17. The Igloo These will spawn in snowy biomes and basically have the essentials for a house. Now if it was just these things, yeah this would be a nice structure, but it wouldn't be this high on the list. However, if you mine the carpet on the floor, it will reveal… nothing, okay never mind. Well actually in half of igloos, underneath this carpet will be a secret trap door, which brings you into a mini dungeon area. Down here there's a chest, which has a few pretty basic items, but most importantly there's a brewing stand and a villager along with a zombie villager for good measure. The brewing stand has a splash potion of weakness inside of it, and the chest has a golden apple, which means that this structure acts as a tutorial for curing zombie villagers, which is pretty nice to have. Villagers are some of the most useful mobs in the game to have as well, as their trades give you access to a large variety of items. The igloo giving access to them, along with having a pretty cool concept, puts it up here on the list. 16. Ruin Portal This structure is really unique, as it's the only structure to spawn in multiple dimensions, the overworld and the nether. I've always really liked how these look, especially in the overworld, as it feels like a small piece of the nether managing to cross through. The portals here all come in different sizes, and some of them can even be rebuilt using the obsidian in the chest, leading to very easy access to the nether. I also like how these sort of act as tutorials on how to build a nether portal. Even if you already know how to build a portal though, these are nice because they give some pretty good loot. These generate with a ton of gold blocks, which are useful for many things, but especially in the nether, as gold ingots can be used for bartering. They stick with the gold theme for the loot in the chest as well, since pretty much anything gold can be found here. Yes, even everyone's favorite item, lightweighted pressure plates. 
I will say the Ruin Portal is definitely a structure that's better in the early game than in the late game, but it's pretty common, so I'm definitely a fan of it. 15. Abandoned Villages These are really cool. Essentially, 2% of every village you find will be an abandoned village. This is a few changes from their main variation. For starters, the houses will all be run down, having no doors or torches, several blocks missing, and cobwebs. Glass panes will all be turned brown as well, which just adds to the rundown atmosphere. The main change, though, is that all the villagers have been replaced by zombie villagers. I really love the concept of these things. They're such a neat thing to find and add so much character to the world, but at the same time, they kind of remove the main appeal of villages. As I said in the igloo segment, villagers are some of the most useful mobs in the entire game, and villages are by far the easiest place to access them. While atmospherically, it does make sense to replace the mob with zombie villagers here, that does in turn make the structure much less useful. Yeah, you could cure these guys, but it'd honestly take less effort to just go find a normal village instead. So that just leaves abandoned villages to act as pretty cool landmarks, which I still think is worth having. Add on that you can still get a large variety of blocks and chest loot, and I think it deserves to be placed here. 14. Ocean Ruins As the name implies, these will spawn at the bottom of the ocean and can be made up of several ruined buildings. Inside some of these buildings, you can find chests, which don't have the best loot in the world, but they do usually contain a buried treasure map. Considering those have a lot of good loot inside of them, I'd say that in turn makes the ocean ruins more helpful. Additionally, these were even changed in the 1.20 update to now contain some suspicious blocks and exclusive pottery sherds. The sherds actually change based on what type of ocean ruin you go to. Cold ocean ruins will give you the blade sherd, explorer sherd, mourner sherd, and plenty sherd, whereas warm ocean ruins will give you the angler sherd, shelter sherd, and snort sherd. Additionally, the suspicious blocks in warm ocean ruins will have a chance to give you a sniffer egg. This is the only place where you can obtain the mob, and yeah, it may not be the most useful thing in the world, but I still think it's worth considering. Since this is also our first structure to have multiple types, I'm gonna say the warm ruins are better than the cold ruins due to the sniffer egg. Now, if this was all these structures had, I'd probably put them a bit lower, but these structures also spawn with drowns, which make them the best spots to try and get tridents. Yes, drowns can spawn anywhere in the ocean, but for some reason, they rarely do in Java, so I find the ruins to be much more reliable. 13. The Woodland Mansion Had this been a ranking of purely how cold the structure looks, this would definitely have been near the top, as it's one of the biggest structures in the game. They're found in Roof Forest and contain a large number of different rooms, making them pretty fun to explore. Now, to be honest, the loot in the rooms themselves aren't the most exciting things in the world. Most of the time, the rooms will just contain a lot of different building blocks, which yeah, can be useful, but they're pretty specific. There are some standout rooms, though, as a few of them can rarely spawn with a diamond block or even a spider spawner. The thing about those rooms, though, is that they're secret rooms, meaning you have to mine the walls and ceiling to find them. Or you could burn the house down, look at them all suffer. Hi. Oh yeah, I should probably mention what the main appeal of these were, the mobs. Inside Woodland Mansions, you can find Vindicators, Evokers, and Delays. The first two drop some really good loot, most notably the Totem of Undying from the Evoker. However, since they can both spawn as part of raids now, there's very little reason to ever go out of your way to a Woodland Mansion. Even the Delays can be found in Pillager Outposts, so the Woodland Mansion doesn't really have much going for it other than it looking kind of cool. It does also have the exclusive Vex armor trim though, so I guess that's worth mentioning. 12. Shipwrecks These are one of my favorite structures visually. I really like their designs and the several different states of decay you can find them in. Shipwrecks are usually found at the bottom of oceans, so they can sometimes be found washed up on shore sometimes, which is also pretty cool to find. Outside of just looking cool though, shipwrecks can generate with up to three different chests, depending on how destroyed the ship is. The least useful is the supply chest. The treasure chest though is really nice as it can give us diamonds, a large supply of iron, a large supply of gold, emeralds, lapis, and XP bottles. On top of that, the map chests can also be useful as they can contain buried treasure maps, which as we've already established are really good. All three chests can also contain the exclusive coast armor trim. So yeah, this structure just has some pretty solid loot. It makes exploring oceans significantly more fun and due to how common they are, they can even act as a pretty solid alternative to mining early game. 11. Pillager Outpost On the surface, this may seem a bit high to place this one, but I do think it deserves to be at least close to here on the list. The structure itself looks pretty neat, but the chest inside is kind of lackluster. I mean, I love Dark Oak, but come on, guys. This does have a few worthwhile things like goat horns, enchanted books, and the exclusive sentry armor trim, but let's just say the chest is not the reason it's up here. The main reason you'll ever want to find a pillager outpost is because of the pillagers themselves. This is by far the most reliable way to get the bad omen effect. Yes, you can get it from pillagers just randomly spawning, but going to a pillager outpost is far more consistent. Bad omen is what activates raids, and using the effect, you can even set up raid farm which are probably some of the most helpful farms in the game. I mean, it lets you farm emeralds, totems of undying, and even the witch drops like gunpowder, glowstone, redstone, and sticks. Yippee! Now, you don't have to build the farm near the outpost in Java Edition, but getting the farm to activate is easiest if done through a pillager outpost. Since the effect isn't exclusive to outpost, though, I can't really put this much higher, but I still think it deserves a decent placement on the list. Plus, you can even get a laze here, which can be helpful for sorting systems. 10. Mine Shafts These generate underground and are pretty cool builds to spruce up the environment while mining. Them being made out of wood is also pretty helpful, as it's easy to run low on wood while caving, making the mine shaft act as a pretty nice place to refill up materials. The loot that can be found in the minecart chests are often pretty good as well, 
well with enchantment books, various different ores, enchanted golden apples, and a few other things. What's also nice about mine shafts are the large abundance of rails, both in the build itself and in the chests. I've always personally found rails a bit of a pain to craft, so this is a nice structure to collect a whole bunch. The main highlight of mine shafts, though, are the cobwebs and cave spiders. Cobwebs can be pretty helpful in both decorating and certain farms, and mine shafts are the most reliable place to collect them. Cave spiders are also exclusive to mine shafts, and they give it a pretty good challenge since they can infect the player with poison. The way cave spiders spawn is through spawners, one of the most useful blocks in the game. Using them, you can create a cave spider farm, which is not only nice for XP, but also string and spider eyes. A structure having a spawner almost automatically makes it place higher up on the list since it makes the players want to return to it often. Though I definitely think the mine shaft has quite a lot to it, that makes it pretty helpful. I should also mention before the comments scream at me that there's even a dark oak variation in mesa biomes. Since that variation spawns higher up, it's much easier to find, so I think it's better than the normal mine shaft. Plus, dark oak is my favorite wood type. 9. Ancient Cities These are by far the largest underground structures in the game. I love how they look too, considering Deep Slate is one of my favorite families of blocks. Due to its massive size, it often contains a ton of amazing loot. This is by far the best place to get enchanted golden apples, and there's even quite a few exclusive items here too. This is the only place in the game where you can get the swift sneak enchantment. You're also able to find disc 5 fragments, the ward armor trim, and the silence armor trim, which is easily the best one. I mean, look at it. Why did they make it only spawn in 1.2% of chests? Now, all that stuff is definitely cool, but how worth it is it to get them? See, I haven't mentioned this structure's claim to fame yet, the Warden. There are a ton of Skull Catalysts around here, meaning you have to be extremely careful while looting this. The Warden is by far the deadliest mob in the game, so much so that I haven't even really bothered raiding many of these in survival. If you don't care about dying, my pro tip is to just use iron tools you don't mind losing, since no matter how much armor you have, the Warden would just tear right through it. While the loot is pretty good here, though, I feel like it's not the most helpful it could be. There aren't any basic materials like diamonds in the chest, just stuff like diamond leggings, and if you already have them, then what's the point of getting more? Pretty much, once you get the armor trims and the enchantment, you never really have to come down here again. But yeah, this is definitely a pretty cool structure, but due to its high difficulty, it's pretty hard to say it's worth raiding sometimes. Oh yeah, you can also find skulls here. 8. Desert Pyramid The Desert Temple is one of the most reliable structures in the game. If you dig the floor inside and fall down to the bottom, you can find- wait. You can find four chests, and in my experience, they very often have some pretty good loot. Not only does it have the exclusive dune armor trim, but this is also a really good source of enchanted books, diamonds, emeralds, and enchanted golden apples. On top of that, this structure was also recently updated to include archaeology. In the floor, you'll now be able to find sand blocks, which you can dig to reveal some suspicious sand underneath. This is the only archaeology spot in the game where I'd say all of the drops you can get from the suspicious sand is decently helpful. You can get gunpowder, TNT, emeralds, diamonds, and four exclusive pottery shirts. The prize pottery shirt in particular is my favorite one, so I always like exploring here. The desert temple is also pretty common, and it's what makes exploring deserts fun in the first place. So due to it having some pretty solid loot, I think it deserves to be placed up here. 7. The Dungeon This is the very first structure ever added to the game back in 2010. Due to that, it's understandably quite simple design-wise, but functionality-wise, it is extremely helpful. These are just small cobblestone and mossy cobblestone rooms with up to two chests and a monster spawner. Obviously, the spawner is the highlight, but let's take a look at the chest first. Compared to some of the other structures we've seen, this stuff isn't the best, but to be fair, it can be pretty solid early game. It gives access to a bunch of different seed types, enchanted books are nice, and there's even a rare chance for other side and enchanted golden apples to appear. So yeah, loot's okay, but nothing special. The spawner though makes up for that and then some. As we've seen before, these are able to spawn in mobs, and structures are the only way to find these spawners. Since spawners can't be moved, if you want to keep using them, you have to return to the structure. There are currently three different types of dungeons, spider, skeleton, and zombie. All of those mobs are extremely useful to farm, but for their drop, and XP, which is why the dungeon is so good. Almost every single survival world I have ever had has had a spawner farm of some kind because they're just so helpful in collecting XP. Since there are three different types of spawners though, and that can drastically change their usefulness, I think we can also do a mini dungeon ranking here. The worst is probably spider. String is a pretty helpful resource, but spiders are the worst in terms of XP due to not being able to spawn with equipment. If you didn't know, normally a spider, skeleton, and zombie drop 5 XP, but they also drop 1 to 3 more XP per equipment, being armor and weapons. On top of that, due to how big spiders are, I find building their farms to be a bit more annoying. My second favorite is the zombie spawner, since they can spawn with equipment, and baby zombies also drop 12 XP. But my favorite is the skeleton spawner for a number of reasons. For one, skeletons always spawn with a bow, meaning they will always drop an additional 1 to 3 XP. Secondly, bones are easily the most helpful basic drop among these mobs, so for me, I think skeleton spawners are the best one to find. All three dungeon types are pretty good though. 6. Ocean Monument Originally, I had this one placed quite a bit higher, but a lot of people reviewed my list and thought I went insane, so out of pure 
pressure, I moved it down. If you think it should be higher, blame them. And if you think it should be lower, I guess I really did go insane. There is quite a lot to like about this structure. First off, it's the best way to get all of the prismarine based blocks, which can be helpful in certain builds. The best is definitely the sea lantern because that can be used in a ton of different scenarios. On top of that, this is the only place you could find sponges, which have the unique property of draining water source blocks from an area. All of that by itself is good, but what really puts it up here are the mobs. First off, the Elder Guardians act as really unique bosses, affecting the player with mining fatigue so they have to go through the monument normally and take all three of them out. They're even able to drop more sponges and the exclusive tied armor trim. Once you don't have mining fatigue anymore, you can also collect eight gold blocks from the center room, which is a pretty good reward. The main mob you want to focus on though are the Guardians. These are able to drop raw cod, prismarine shards, and prismarine crystals. All of those are pretty helpful, but what's really interesting is that each Guardian drops 10 XP, and if you remember from the dungeon segment, that's double the standard hostile mob XP rate. Now there's not exactly a Guardian spawner block, however the entire monument essentially acts as one big one. So while it does take a lot more effort, you can turn any ocean monument into an insanely efficient XP farm. Bubble Columns have also made this a bit easier in recent years, as now you don't even have to drain the entire monument to get one to work. So not only does the ocean monument have a lot of exclusive blocks, but it's also one of the best sources of XP in the entire game. 5. The Bastion Remnant I would say this is probably the second deadliest structure in the game right behind the ancient city, but this time I'd say the loot is significantly more important. These of course house a ton of piglins, so if you try looting their chests, you'll be put in a lot of danger. Luckily though, since there are so many, Bastions are a fantastic spot to barter with piglins, which can give a ton of pretty useful items. On the other hand though, piglin brutes are extremely deadly and will attack you regardless of if you aggro the other piglins. Taking them out is nowhere near as hard as the wardens though, so with enough precision, raiding a bastion isn't too terrible. But now let's take a look at that loot to determine why you'd even want to raid one of these in the first place. In a bastion, there can be four different types of chests, and it is determined by what type of bastion you're in. The type of chest that appears in all bastions is the generic chest, which by itself has a lot of good loot. They can provide you with a ton of iron and gold, and on rare occasions you can even find ancient debris and netherite scraps. Considering how rare netherite is, that's a pretty good find. There's also several exclusive items for the Bastion too. That includes Soul Speed Enchantment Books, the Snout Armor Trim, the Snout Banner Pattern, and of course Pigstaff, the best record disc in the game. In addition to those though, the generic chest also has a chance to have the netherite upgrade template. Now, I don't really like this feature, but regardless of my thoughts for it, Bastions are undeniably more useful now as they are literally required to make netherite tools. So yeah, the Bastions got some pretty good chest loot, and that's not even considering the large amount of gold blocks that can be found around the structure. Now, I did mention there are four different types of Bastions, so now it's time for us to do a little mini ranking of them. The worst is probably housing, just because it can only spawn with a generic chest. The next one up is the Bridge Bastion, as its chest also have a chance to have a lodestone. That's not the most helpful block in the world, but if you ever do need it, getting it here saves you another right ingot. The next one up is Stables. Its exclusive chest isn't really that helpful, unless you're into Crimson Roots, but from what I can tell, it has a slightly higher chance of giving Ancient Debris than the Bridge Bastion. But the best Bastion by far is Treasure. The Treasure Room chests have some of the best loot out of any in the game. It has a 42% chance to have a netherite ingot, which is huge. It very often comes with diamond armor, along with just diamonds by themselves. It's the only one of these chests that can give enchanted golden apples, and most importantly of all, it's the only Bastion to be guaranteed to have a netherite upgrade template, which is probably the most important item in Bastions right now. Plus, this Bastion also has magma cube spawners, which is nice to throw on. So yeah, for having an incredible amount of valuable loot, the Bastion definitely deserves to be up here. For the Stronghold. Okay, I no clue how to rank this one. I mean, I do like it. It's maze design is pretty neat, and the various different rooms are cool to explore. <laughs> Look at this loser, he's in jail. But otherwise, the loot here is just sort of okay. I mean, the library can be a nice source of books for enchanting, but otherwise, there's not much else here. Well, besides the end portal, of course. Yeah, the stronghold kind of has to be placed high due to it being the literally only place you can access the end. Since that's kind of required to beat the Ender Dragon, along with getting a bunch of really powerful items, the stronghold is pretty important. To me, though, that almost feels like cheating. I mean, most of the time you come here, it's literally just to leave for the end. It undeniably deserves to be high up on the list, but I don't know, it doesn't feel as cool as the other structures up here, I guess. Actually, never mind. It's got a silverfish spawner. The stronghold is peak. Three, the village. This is probably the first structure to come to mind when I say Minecraft structure. These are pretty dang helpful during most stages of the game, but especially in the early to mid stages. As the name implies, these are towns that can be generated with several different buildings, and based on the buildings that spawn, you can get different resources from them. They have a lot of the essentials like beds, crafting tables, and furnaces. Farms can also be found here that give the players a lot of good food. On top of those, though, the more specific workstations like blast furnaces and brewing stands can also be found here. Speaking of those workstations, though, the main 
appeal is of course the villagers, which as I've stated before, are one of the most helpful mobs in the game. Not only can you trade with them to get a large variety of different resources, but those resources are pretty dang important. You can get a full set of diamond armor and tools from villagers, and you can also get mending bugs to keep them alive forever. Plus, villagers trade golden carrots too, easily the best food source in the game. Villagers are also essential elements in building iron farms, which are one of the most important farms in any survival world. Villagers are also the most convenient spot to start a raid, which as we went over before, can give some pretty good items. And of course, the fact that these generate with so many buildings give the players a nice place to stay in the early stages of the game before they build a house. The large number of buildings also make these quite fun to come across as well. They're definitely one of the best aesthetic structures in the game. In fact, there are actually five different types of villages, each with different buildings based on the biome. Let's do a really quick ranking of them, purely based on their aesthetics since the resources are relatively equal between them. My least favorite is the Savannah Village. Acacia wood is one of my least favorite wood types, so that's kind of a given. Next up is the Desert Village. It fits the desert biome pretty well, but I just like the buildings and the other types more. Also, I should mention that the Desert Village is the only place where you can get camels. Then we have the Snow Plains Village, which I like due to how it incorporates snow and ice. Following that is the Plains Village, which I see is the most common type, and the builds are pretty good. And my favorite is definitely the Taiga, because I just really love spruce wood. Now, the only reason I'm not ranking the villages higher is because it doesn't have anything that's technically exclusive, but due to them being one of the most lightly structures in the game, I think it earned its spot. 2. End Cities These are the big structures you're able to find after defeating the Ender Dragon, and they're definitely worth going to because they have some fantastic loot. You can get a ton of diamond armor and tools, diamonds by themselves, and other ores. The most important loot here, though, is the exclusive stuff, and man, there's a lot. First are the Spire Armor Templates and the Dragon Head, which are just aesthetic things, but they're still pretty cool. The other two items, though, are the main reasons you'll want to come here. First are the Shulker Shells, which are dropped by the structure's exclusive mob, the Shulker. I love how these guys work, as when they hit you, they'll affect you with levitation, so you then have to try and avoid falling to your death. It makes the challenge here really unique, which adds to the structure's coolness factor. The Shulker Shells are able to be made into Shulker Boxes, which are basically like chests that you can carry in your inventory, making the game significantly less tedious. That by itself would have been huge, but this structure also is the only place you could obtain the Elytra. This is by far the best method of movement in the entire game, as it lets you fly anywhere you want to at pretty high speeds. So yeah, for being the source of two incredibly valuable items, the end cities sort of have to place highly. But I feel like these things are way too rare because you can spend hours searching the end and come up empty handed. The end islands are so barren without them that it can genuinely be maddening trying to find a city. Add on that the end ship, the thing that has the elytra, only spawns in 25% of cities, and yeah, I've definitely lost it by now. But the long hunt still manages to be worth it. Plus, I've always liked how purple looks, so this is still easily one of my favorite structures. One, the Nether Fortress. Right away, this was my number one pick, and I think it's pretty understandable to see why. The Nether Fortress is the main and only source of a lot of important resources in the game. First off, looks-wise, I love the nether bricks here. Plus, that also makes this a good source of them in case you don't feel like smelting netherrack. The chest loot here is also not too bad since you can get diamonds, nether warts, and the exclusive rib armor trim. Nether fortresses are also the main source of nether warts, so if you ever want to make potions, you'll need to come here. The main thing that really puts the nether fortress up at the top, though, are its two exclusive mobs, the blaze and wither skeleton. First, let's start with the blaze. They add a lot of danger to the fortress since they can set you on fire, but fighting them is well worth it since they drop blaze rods. Blaze rods are important for a large number of things. You can turn it into a brewing stand, and you can use the powder to make potions. More importantly though, that powder is used to make Eyes of Ender, which you not only need to do to get into the end to fight the dragon, but also to make end crystals to respawn the dragon after the fact. In addition to this, blazes also drop 10 XP like the guardians we mentioned before. What's especially nice in this case though, is that blazes actually have a spawner in the nether fortress, which you can easily turn into an XP farm. But as I said, that's not the only mob you're going to want to farm, as the wither skeleton is also exclusive to the fortress. They're extremely dangerous, since getting hit by them gives the player the wither effect, but their drops are well worth fighting for. The main one being the Wither Skeleton Skull, and if you collect three of them, you can spawn the Wither Boss, which eventually lets you make a beacon. While Wither Skeletons don't have spawners like Blazes, you can still set up fortresses in such a way to make a pretty efficient Wither Skeleton farm. That way you can very quickly get a ton of skulls and thus beacons, which are some of the most powerful blocks in the game. Wither Skeletons also drop coal and bones, which are also pretty helpful in their own right. So to me, I think it's pretty obvious that the Nether Fortress has to be number one. Not only is it really cool design-wise, but it has two of the most important mobs in the game exclusive to it. Both of those mobs give you access to two of the game's main bosses as well. So I think, based on my criteria, there's no other structure that could take the number one spot other than the Nether Fortress. But anyways, that's it for this video. Are you obsessed with the Desert Village library building and hate me for not putting it at number one? Let me know in the comments. This is a pretty hard ranking to make, and I would not be surprised if this turns out to be my most controversial ranking on Minecraft to date, but I hope you all enjoyed it regardless. Probably not my most controversial ranking ever, though. Those Mario fans are vicious sometimes. If you have any more suggestions for rankings in the future, make sure to let me know. I've really enjoyed all the Minecraft rankings I've done this year. But anyways, dry bones for Smash, and I'll see you guys next time.